Do you know what is a filthy rags? You guys got dusters in your house. Unaingia unafanya hivi hapo matope. Ili sasa uingie. Filthy rag. A rag is something that is so useless. A rag is something that is so dirty. A rag has no worth. So the Bible says, even your most righteous acts before God, it's filthy rags. So we are invited to the knowledge, to understand who you are as a person, what you have as an individual. It is nothing but the grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you, didn't, you did not do anything to deserve the grace and the salvation that you have. But God looked and said, even though these ones are sinners, when we are still sinners, the Bible says, Jesus died for us. What can you call that if it is not grace? What can you call that if it's not grace? That when you are messed up, even in moment when you are so messed up, he said, I still love this one. I am still dying for them. I am still going for them. That is the grace of God. Father, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for the salvation and that you brought your grace to be with us. Lord, we give you thanks that we have been saved through grace and it is not by our effort. Therefore, we ask you, God, that you help us to always humble before you to know that this is your gift. To know that, Lord, it is all by your love. It is not by our effort. It has never been and it will never be. But, Lord, it is by your love. And we give you glory for that. We thank you, Elohim, that you loved us with an everlasting love. And you brought grace, you brought love, you brought salvation to us, oh God, and to me. And now I'm called your son by your grace. We thank you, our Father. We give you glory for that. We thank you because you are faithful. Thank you because you are faithful. In Jesus' name we give thanks. Now, in line of the grace, there is a prayer we need to pray. Because if now this grace was given for free, what should you do with it? And this is a question I'm asking. When someone comes to you with a very, very expensive gift, and they, they, they give you, yes, you did not pay for it, you, you are just given. But that gift is very expensive. What should you do with that gift? Should you take care of it or you, you can just play around with it because you are given for free? What can you do? How should you do with that gift? You should take care of it, right? And not just take care of it. Take care of it extremely. Let me remind you, if you are forgotten, for your information, this grace was very expensive. Do you know why it was very expensive? Someone had to die. He gave his life. You know, you know, someone can give you, I don't know, uh, Derek, what is one of the best gifts someone has ever given you? Someone, an individual. A gift. What, what, what have you ever been given? And, and this is for all of us. I want you to think what someone has ever given you. A gift. Someone just came and maybe it was your birthday and they said, this is what I want to give you. Derek, what have you ever been given by someone that you can remember even? A phone. Derek has been given a phone. And I hope I go a katululu. But whatever. Even though it was a katululu, it was a phone. But a, a smartphone, huh? But someone gave you a gift. Now, that smartphone, would you just leave it anyhow because you are given, you walk like this, and then you can just throw it down? No! Hallelujah! You could not joke around with a gift. You cannot. Why? Because it is precious. So God gave us Jesus. As a gift. And that is why when you interrogate the Bible in the book of Titus chapter 2 verse 11. It says now this grace has appeared to everyone. It has appeared to everyone. And this grace should teach you and me to shun the evils of this world. Hallelujah. And it says this grace is a tutor. And it should teach you to live godly lives in this present time. So grace is a tutor. When you live under the grace, you don't continue sinning. You continue becoming righteous because this grace is teaching you what to do. And that is the prayer we are drawing from Titus chapter 2 verse 11. That we pray that now that we are living by the grace and that this grace has been given to us by God as a gift, may we never take advantage of this grace. Hallelujah. Even as we pray that the Holy Ghost is going to teach us how to live by the instruction of this grace. 
and to say no. Because that is the language. That this grace teaches us to say no to the ungodly things of this world and to live a righteous life in this present age. So it is a tutor and we should be taught by this grace. Hallelujah. So I want you to, to have a few minutes and speak to God that this grace continues teaching you to do what is right. To live a life of godliness. To shun away the life of the world. To be distinct and different for God. And that something in your life is going to be seen different. Let, let people when they look at you, let the words that you speak pray like the words that you speak the thoughts that come in your mind your actions what you do the people you interact with whatever you do let it reflect this grace of god hallelujah because our life is a living testimony when someone is told can you analyze this person what can they say about you but we might not be so much caring about what people can say but we should be very cautious what god can say about us Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Verse 14, the Bible says that you are a city that is set up on a hill. It says that uh, you are a light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. You are the light of the world and a city that is set on a hill which cannot be hidden. We, don't, we were not called by God to just live a life. No. We were called by God to shine forth his light. Marcy Kennedy, in the company that you work, are you shining forth the light of Christ? Whatever you do, where, whatever you do on a single day, are you showing forth the light of Christ in your area of jurisdiction, in your environment, even in your neighbors, wherever you live, Apokayole, wherever you live are you showing forth the light of Christ hallelujah are, are people being illuminated by the light that is shining in you you know we have come to a point whereby Christians have become so common we, we have become so common that even in the midst of an environment you cannot tell if this guy is a Christian you cannot unless they take a mic and say Bona sifiwe Bona sifiwe sena before they say that, you cannot know. But it is our jurisdiction, it is our responsibility to shine forth the light of Christ. Whatever you do, let, it, let people know this person, they belong to God. Can you do something and someone says, you have a special place in heaven because you have touched their lives. Hallelujah. And this one doesn't mean that you need to preach on them. No, no, no. You just need to do something. You just need to express kindness and reach out to them. And then they will be convinced and say, mm, this one, this one, they belong to heaven. Because the Bible says, and Jesus walked in the face of the earth doing good. So even before, could take a, before Jesus could, could take a mic and say, I am Jesus, the son of God. Whatever he did showed he's the son of God. And that is a challenge that we are being asked now, this morning. Whatever you do, does it reflect this light that is in you? May God help us. Say, may God help me. So the Lord is going to help us. The Lord is going to help us. I want us to engage a prayer. And this is a heavy prayer. We, might, we may be standing on our feet. Because this is a, a warfare. We want to enter into a warfare, a moment of warfare. And... Um, um, I want to read in the book of uh, just a minute. This is Colossians chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. <clears throat> Remember, it's a prayer of warfare. The Bible says, and having disarmed, all of us, and having disarmed. Angalia neighbor yako kama anasema. And having disarmed the powers, authorities, and rulers, 
He made a public spectacle. Triumphing over them by the cross. So here, the Bible gives us a glimpse of what Jesus accomplished by the cross. And the Bible says that Jesus triumphed over principles, over rulers, over powers, over decree of the devil, because he nailed them on the cross. When he said it is finished, Hallelujah! You know, you know they thought, you know they thought that they are killing Jesus. The, the, the devil says, uh, and it is written by Paul, that they thought when they were crucifying the Lord of our salvation, they had won, only to realize, like, what have we just done? Because the things were turned around, tables were turned. So when when he said it is finished. He had already disarmed all this. So Colossians brings a glimpse of what had happened. Because can you imagine Jesus crucifying all the powers and disarming? When we talk about disarming, sometimes you can hear the government of Kenya starting as um, a process called the disarmament process in the Turkana area and the Pokot. The disarmament process they give a notice to the members of public and they tell them, if any one of you is holding a gun illegally, Kesho Ipeleke Kwa Chief. Because the time we shall come now to do the operation. But the time that you have already surrendered that weapon, you have umeamuka as we make a gunia, unaipeleka kwa chief. Nasama happen in Likuna AK forty seven, Yohi. Gavai Mesema, we give. You are safe. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when you wait on Monday and the KDF comes to do the operation, when they find a gun, you are killed because you are a terrorist. So, I am just trying to open our mind here. They will say that in having disarmed, disarmed means Jesus went to the, you know, the armory of the devil and he took every siraha that the devil thought that he had. That is the silaha to come and, and injure you as a child of God. So having disarmed, disarmed, disarmed means he has no power. Hallelujah. Disarmed means he has no authority over your life. And that's why he say he triumphed over them over by the cross. And you know making a spectacle. Spectacle is like something unangalia. Nikama drama, nikama video. He did that. So Jesus disarmed every power of the enemy and he rendered them powerless. So I, I, I feel like I needed to talk to you concerning this scripture even as we enter into the warfare. The Bible says our war, it is not carnal. We don't deal with carnality. And that's why when you see people that are fighting, because we don't wage war against flesh and blood. Hallelujah. But against principalities. But now these principalities and these powers have been dis disarmed. Our, our place is to just declare that we have been, you know, we have been saved. We are winners. We are secure. We are protected. And nothing that the devil can do. And I remember the words of Papa Samuel. He used to tell me, you see, you can see a lion there. You know, it is, it is rolling. It is It is rolling. With a lot of voice. Only to realize. When you go near. It does not have any teeth. <laughs> Mama Samuel you remember right? You tell me. When you go near to the light. You know it's rolling. When you go it doesn't have no teeth. It doesn't have no crow. You know the crows that can really harm you. It, it is imekatwa. Haina. Sasa ata alikuwa niambia. Ata ikita kukuma. Inakupika kiss. Because it doesn't have no teeth. Hallelujah. That is how the devil is. And this is not my word. This is the word of God. It is a, he disarmed the powers, the authorities, and rulers. So when you see, when you see a lion there ruling and, and wanting to eat you, just near, it doesn't have no teeth. Now, you know, sometimes now, Nakuna watu na uku Pakistan, si wazuri. Wanachukwenga kirayo na pama kitaiga. Umbwa kama zimelala. I guess you, uh, Bonnie, lazima meona yo. Umbwa kama imelala, nani kikubwa, ana, nani kidoli tu, kinawe kwa hapo. Na kuambia the moment yo umbwa itamuka. 
ione hata karibu ivunjike miguu sasa mimi nauliza kwa nini ipotee na hii this is just a dolly sometimes we we fear the devil for nothing hallelujah are you guys feeling charged sometimes we fear the devil for nothing why when you read such a scripture that jesus having disarmed the powers the rulers the authority he made a public spectacle of them because he triumphed over them by the cross when he said it is that is the reality you are the lord my healer. you sent your word Thy healer, you are the Lord who healed me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word. And if you are sick in this place, I want you to place your hand wherever you feel sick, even as we sing in this form. Because Jesus is our healer. Oh, you sent your word and healed our sins. You are the Lord, my healer. You are. I want you to declare healing in your body. If you are not feeling okay, place your hand where you are feeling funny and declare that you are healed. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. By the power of the Calvary, we are healed. In the mighty name of Jesus. my refuge and my fortress my God in whom I trust surely he will save me from the fuller snare and from every deadly pestilence he will cover me with his feathers and under his wings I will find refuge his faithfulness will be my shield and my defender father we bless you this morning for we are healed by your power you sent your word and healed every disease. Your word does not know any bacteria. Your word cannot recognize any virus. And Lord, we are healed in the name of Jesus. Our heads to neck to back to stomach to legs and knees and toes. We are whole in Jesus name. We have received your healing uh, from the head to the toes. Uh, in our head, in our hearts, we are healed in Jesus' name. 
We have received the power of your healing now in the mighty name of Jesus. We stretch our bodies out as a sign of your healing in the mighty name of Jesus. There is no migraine. There is no headache. There is no toothache. There is no eye problem. There is no back pain. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare now there is no flu. There is no fever. There is no cold. In the mighty name of Jesus, there is no pain of the neck, of the joints, of the knees. In the mighty name of Jesus. By your stripes we are healed. By your stripes we are made whole. By your stripes we are healthy. And Lord we bless you. For we dwell in the shadow of your mighty. You have covered us with your wings. You have stretched your healing. In the mighty name of Jesus. You have stretched your healing. Even to the family members. That we left at home. We declare now. The healing of Jesus in their bodies, in the name of the Father. We declare now the healing of Jesus of those who are admitted in the hospital. We send the power and the healing of Jesus in the water, in the bed, in the name of Jesus. Father, we send your power on the children that are sick. We release your healing now. We release your healing now. The healing is flowing uh, from this place where they are. In the mighty name of Jesus, you heal every disease. Uh, you heal every cancer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we judge cancer now. We judge HIV now. We judge hepatitis now. We judge high blood pressure. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, we release your power of healing now. Healing now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, your power is supreme. Your power is supreme. Your power is supreme. By the finished work of the Calvary, everything is finished. Father, we thank you for you have healed, for you have restored, for you have revived, for you have given life in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Can somebody appreciate Jesus? Can you give Jesus a high cry in the mighty name of Jesus? Thank you, Elohim. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them, Welcome to church. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, brethren. The power of God has always been available. Hallelujah. The power of God has always been available. It is us to tap to that power because it's forever available. Tell yourself the power of God is always available. Let us put our hands together for the servant of the Lord.